I promise you, we're going to make it worth your time. So tonight, um, it's the zero day class. Um, so you know what I mean? You know, with this class right here, you all know, being in the pack, we, we preach about, um, you know, utilizing time to your advantage and and really looking at things from a macro perspective really taking the investors approach um to the trading um and we look to identify you know uh short-term volatility or opportunities that we say that may arise um through the course of you know our swings and, and long-term trading um and so with that process we know that the majority of people um really like the the zero days the the day trading and stuff like that so we really wanted to provide a process and a like a kind of a step by step so that people can follow and put together a process for themselves um that really works for them so they're not you know day trading like the rest of folks that are out there that are kind of just like gambling so to speak so uh, we utilize this process um we've been doing this for a couple of years now pretty consistently and and we've you know we've had really great results we've had consistent results um throughout the time and yeah this you know understanding that this is a a risky um type of trading going after the zero day expirations and things of that nature so you really want to be precise and specific about how you want to take approach to to this type of uh day trading so uh with that being said we wanted to put this class together to give people um even for those that you know don't even want to actually do the day trading they may just want to um learn and and you know eventually maybe add that tool to their tool belt so um this this class is really for educational purposes but we do identify setups that um really have um shown really great results um over the, the life of you know us doing this course for the last two plus years so um you know we 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 feel very confident in the process Obviously, you know, you're not going to have a 100% win rate or whatever, but we've seen um, way more times than not, um, you know, this has been a pretty successful process. So with that being said, we understand the risk management and this can be a risky uh, thing. So you can lose an entire position um, utilizing these day trades or these zero days specifically. So um, that's why the risk management piece of it is really crucial as well. So um you know that's pretty much it in terms of the housekeeping uh, we're going to get right into it uh, what i want to do tonight uh, with this class is essentially go through and identify setups that we potentially take advantage of for tomorrow whether to the upside or to the downside makes no difference to me um however it is earnings and earnings are showing a lot of strength in the overall market i will say however um you know i don't see it as like across the board so it's more like a um selective kind of thing more like a stop pickers thing like i like to say so just be mindful of that um but we do see that you know how spy reacted today or spx how that reacted today so we we do have some kind of bullish sentiment so um i think the expectation is that we will um, continue with that tomorrow with earnings um that are, are coming up tomorrow so um you know so you know it'll be it'll be one of those days tomorrow so i think for us we just need to be um smart and identifying stocks that have relative strength um and you know that we can take advantage of for tomorrow but you guys know the drill for the most part for the new folks just buckle your seat belt um and and, and join along for the ride so as i was saying we get into the point where we aggregate uh tickers um that we identify with setups that we like, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit here briefly. Um, and then once we've identified the tickers that we like, we take a, a process of going through and, I, and adding broadening formations. Um, those broadening formations will then um, give us a little more clarity in terms of if that setup um, has a, a has a you know I guess you could say a greater potential um, to not only trigger but to go in force and continue on the move to the next target um, because we do place value on broad information so we want to understand where those sit because that can alter the direction of a trade so we want to have those identified then um, from there if we do find trades that still are i guess you could say attractive to us then we can go to the next step and then start to calculate the roi plot out our targets 
um, and, and identify what the return on investment would be if we were to take those trades. And then we can identify if the trade is worth our time. Um, then from there, we're able to develop our watch list from that. Um, so that's kind of what we'll do. We'll start off with going through some setups. I do have a lot of broad information drawn on a lot of tickers. So for the most part, we typically do not go through the broad information drawing part of it, um, only because I have a lot of these already drawn. But if there are tickers that we do come across that, you know, are missing broad information or do not have them, um, we will, you know, we'll draw them in real time kind of thing. So um, also um, for everybody on the call, you, you guys know the drill. Um, you can drop your tickers in the chat. Um, I'll take a look and go through them. Um, but for the, the sake of time, what I like to do is I is go through it and, and put together a scan on the four hour as well as the daily um, timeframes. Um, typically, I like uh, my preference, I should say, would be the uh, four hour time frame um, to take entries for these zero days, uh, particularly on Fridays. Um, so I really look I like the inside four hour setups um, for me personally. I don't I'm, I'm not a big. Um, Rev strap person on the four hour. It's just specific to that time frame in me. I don't know, um, but I really like the Chicago's um, as well as the two one twos on the four hour. So that's really what I look for in terms of scans. I'll take advantage of some inside four hours, and then also we'll look at the daily time frame. Um, you know, look for some inside days as well as some rev strap potentials, um, two down hammer kind of thing. So um, you guys know the drill for the most part. Um, the majority of the time we, you know, we typically won't, won't need to get to the daily time frame scans, but we'll take a look and see what we've got. Um, I do have some things in mind that I think would go good uh, for tomorrow, but we'll, we'll, we're going to go through the process and, and look to identify stocks. So um, a little bit about the methodology, make sure I'm recording. Yeah. So a little bit about the methodology here. Um, if you are a part of the, if you come and join the Strat 101 classes, um, I talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, I talk about um, the types of trades that we like to identify. Um, and we talk about those in the context of reversals versus continuation trades. And so um, for me, my preference is to identify uh, what you would call uh, continuation trades, things that are already moving in a direction and I'm essentially taking a trade that's going to go back into full time frame continuity um, in either of those directions. And so that's typically the thought process um, that I'm looking for on those. However, um, you got to look at it from the context of a macro. So when I say a reversal, I'm talking about like a trend change, not like a reversal on the smaller time frame. So um, if something went two down on the hour or the four hour or the day or something like that, that's a little bit different. That's not a reversal to me. That's more or less like a TTO. Um, so when I talk about reversals, I'm looking at like trend changes. And so that's where the macro trades, that's where that weekly watch list comes from. I'm looking at those types of trades more on the macro timeframes versus um, today, what we're focusing on is really about identifying stocks that have relative strength um, that have um, that are showing, I guess you could say momentum, but they've been moving um, they've been trending in one direction over a period of time. So there's a little bit more confidence that the trade or the stock, I should say, will continue in that direction. And so um, think about it like this. I always wanna get on a moving train. Like I wanna get on a moving bus. I don't wanna have to, um, you know, get something that started from point A kind of, kind of thing. I wanna, cause then it, it could fail. You know, I, I want stuff that's already been moving, already been showing strength. So therefore I can just, hey, um, if it triggers back and forth into continuity, I can just take advantage of that for a short period of time, um, get in for uh, uh, a short time, not a long time, um, trying to have a good time. So, you know, that's typically the thought process that we're looking at for these continuation plays. Now, the charts don't always give us that now, you know what I mean? But that's ideally what I'm looking for. And then from there, we'll kind of work our way through and see what we have in front of us. So right here on the list, it looks as though we got 183 on the list here on the in with inside four hour setups. I'll be interested. It looks like the majority of them are bullish. Um, 
I'll be interested to see how many of those are tickers that are in um, our universe. So another thing is like we have a universe of stocks. So I don't look at every four hour setup. Um, I, I kind of cherry pick the stocks that I typically am comfortable and familiar with trading that are within my universe of stocks. And I, you know, everyone's universe could be different. Uh, my universe could be, you know, different than yours or, or, or down the line, anybody else's. Um, and so over time, that'll, that'll increase, that'll expand. So, um, so we'll, we'll go through some of these. We're not going to go through all of them on here, but let's take a look what we got. First one here um, is Meta. And this one here has been crazy strong. Um, looks like it got to that quarterly broad information range um, this today or yesterday and, and broke above it today um, and got to the monthly. It's kind of like holding up there. Um, so it, it is sitting right above or right around these broad informations. Um, me personally, it does have it does have the the bearish outside or the bearish afternoon candle from the day on the four hour. Um, but again, I you know so you could see a potential rev start to the downside. But honestly, for me, when I talked about this before, when we had these large gap ups on these stocks like this, that signifies like that, you know I don't want to say just bullishness, but it signifies that like you know buyers are there. You know what I mean? And so. When you have that kind of situation, um, now eventually it will fill the gap. But I think when you talk about it from like it gapped up today and, you know, or yesterday or whatever, uh, yeah, it, get, it gapped up today. So like with it gapping up today, I, it's hard for me to see it coming back to fill the gap down tomorrow kind of thing. So that's that's kind of my mindset. Now, what you might see is it might trigger down, but don't doesn't give you much movement down, just kind of ranges within that price range. And so that's what that's kind of what I anticipate when you have these large gap ups and then you have like a bearish um, signal uh, right after the gap up. It's like, for me, logically, there's too much buying that happened in that today for it just to automatically leave and then it comes back down tomorrow. Uh, so that so my, my thought on Meta is that it'll probably consolidate up at this range and then it'll decide what it wants to do from there. Um, so I don't really look at this one as one that really I would want to um, take advantage of just based off the setups I'm looking at now. I would want to look at how it moves intraday tomorrow because, um, you know, for me personally, the buyers are there. So it, I think it has a likelihood to, to move up tomorrow than it does to go down, even though the candle's bearish. If that makes any sense for y'all. So that's meta. Uh, I want to spend some time on it. I know some of us are already in there. So if you're already in, it's, it's all good. But if you are looking for an entry for a zero day tomorrow, um, I will look intraday for an entry. So we're going to keep it moving. We're going to go down, um, take a look at yeah, stocks that I really don't want to play. <laughs> We got some of these clean energy stocks I'm seeing on here. We've got Plug. Um, Plug's got an inside four hour. Um, Plug's been trending to the downside. I'm not really inclined to play it. Um, I think there's better stuff out there for us to take advantage of. So I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm not spending a lot of time on that. So we got Yarn, LY, NLY. And we'll get into these tickers on the in the um, chat here momentarily. And here's another one beyond been trending down. Had a strong day. Um, in, well, today um, in the morning time, kind of cooled off in the afternoon. So I, you know, similar deal. I like I I want to identify something that's in continuation versus something that looks like it started to reverse or like go back the other direction. Uh, I like those more so for swings, more so than I do for. Uh, short-term zero-day type of trades. So this in, this LLY has been like really strong. Um, I don't alert it to the pack because it is a very expensive one, but um, it does move pretty well. Looks like it's got an inside for our setup for tomorrow. Uh, looks like you got 212. Yeah, so you got a 212. 
on on the four hour buck three ninety one twenty five. But again, like I said, the contracts they're not cheap. They're a little bit pricey, especially for zero days. Um, I like to identify those that have a, uh, you know, it's not the the cost of entry is not as high. Um, but I do like to set up on that one, and that one's been bullish, so that would that would qualify as something that fits within the framework of what I would like to see um, in terms of like, you know, a trade that's been going in for us, that's, you know, continuities to the upside and it's giving us an entry. It looks like a TTO uh, on the day, giving us an entry back in continuity to the upside. So um, if it triggers 212 tomorrow back up, then we'll have full time frame continuity. So. That's kind of the idea behind that one. Um, you can set an alert for it, um, but typically uh, contract volume, open interest is low and um, they're on the pricier side. keep it rolling though <laughs> I don't really like um we take a look at DraftKings and we'll take a look at some airlines We got DraftKings. DraftKings had a very, very strong week last week. Uh, looks like it got to a weekly broad formation um, and kind of got rejected right there. And it's kind of been trending down since. Um, well, you know, the question begs right here, is it is it trying to reverse back up or is it done? Is it Did it hit its target and is it now ready to reverse back the other way? Um, so that would be the concept there on DraftKings. I'm going to let it be. Um, if anything, though, if somebody was looking to play it, um, I'd be thinking, I'd be thinking back downside, um, to be honest. Three, one, two, back to the downside um, here below, what is this, $20 and 86 cents. And I'd be looking to take it back to like twenty dollars and twenty six cents. Um, but again, that DraftKings looks like it could have potentially gotten to its trigger to its target, I guess you could say. But I'm a, I'm gonna hold on that one. I think there's some other plays out there that I rather take advantage of for the zero day. So what we got here, we got Delta Airlines. Here's another one went up last week, um, hit a high, looks like it came to a weekly broad information. Um, gave us a shooter right after that. Came back down this week. Now we're pushing back up on price. Like we had the swing lows. Um, hmm. So this one, I'm all right. Um, we do have conflict. Looks like we're at, we're potentially um, turning back around to go back up. Um, looks like we got a potential two one two here on the four hour above thirty three forty four on Delta Airlines. Um, also, we've got the inside day set up. I you know honestly I don't like the conflict that it has, but I do like the, the level the price level that it's at. So it's one of those situations where like. It, you know, if it reversed and went up tomorrow, I would not be surprised. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, man, it's, it's like it's right at the point of turning around. So if you're right and you take it to the upside and it moves up, then it'll, it'll pay you well. But if not, then you kind of take an L on that one. And you get back to this next broad information at 3370 or something like that. So you need to do the math on that and see. Um, and then maybe maybe it pushes above that somewhat. But Delta doesn't look bad. Um, I, you know, doesn't look bad. I just don't like the uh, conflict. Um, UAL has a similar deal um, setting up for tomorrow. May come back to these and take, take a look later. But it uh, looks like 
airlines, they, they may be at a point of trying to reverse back up. So this could be interesting on those. It's like LUV um, gave us a two down hammer. It's like right under that broadening formation. Hmm. That looks interesting. Volume's high on those too. So let's take a look at CCL. Similar deal, uh, coming off lows. Ah. Okay, we got MRK. MRK turned into a Friday special, y'all. I don't know if y'all been paying attention. But it's been, it's been cooking. Damn, look at that. Sheesh. Thanks, showing up. Outside week. Interesting. It's only strong. It's not giving us no real entries though. Outside day, two up on the four hour. Keep your eye on this one tomorrow for intraday. To keep your eye on that one. It's not giving you an entry right now. But that may be by design. Uh, let's take a look at Lyft, Boeing, and then Netflix. Man, they ain't, they ain't really throwing too many good ones out there like that. Uh, we got inside day on Boeing, but again, we got conflict. We're in the middle of the range here. Hmm. Boeing, let's keep moving. I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing right now. We're gonna get into the chat in the um, chat here in a second. CCJSO. This this looks a little bit better, but the problem here is that these damn broad informations are in the way. I don't like that. All right. Um, so we got the four hour hit that hit that uh hit that broad information. It's like man, still making higher lows on the four, and then same things happening on the daily time frame. And the setup looks fire. I think this thing is bullish, but we right here at quarterly broad informations. So I gotta leave it. I gotta leave it. Leave it alone right here. That one looks really good though. I like SO, I mean not SO, but uh, CCJ. Kamiko, we roll with Kamiko. Um, so now we're looking at SO. This has been a monster for us. We've been playing this one long uh, for a minute now. I don't know, what, six weeks, something like that. We've been playing that one for a while. So uh, it's, it's, been, it's been cruising right along as expected. Um, looks like we have TTO here on the daily time frame. On the four hours, giving us a rev strat setup. We got a hammer two down on the four hour. Um, nice retracement and prices coming back strong here. So also we're looking at the inside day setup two one two back to the upside. Um, I like that. I like the way it sets up right here. Um, obviously, you know how I feel about the broad information level, so that'll be something to watch for as well. Um, I do like the triggers at this point. Um, but the fact that it just broke below it, um, I, you know, we could have accumulated those sale orders that's in that price range. So I'll be looking at this one tomorrow. Um, the one challenge with this one is you've got to understand that um, it's not highly traded in terms of like contracts on options. So uh, we've got to identify if there's people at the party. 
So that's the main thing on that one. But the setup looks good. We gotta be mindful of that broad information. Um, I have an inclination that um, we consume those sale orders on the way down and we've got room to push up through that monthly BF right there, but we've got to see what happens, how it opens up tomorrow. Your entry level will be 73.57 on the four hour. And then on a daily time frame, you've got an inside day break, which will give you that 212, and that'll give you that break above 7362. So yeah, SO, um, because it's been showing relative strength, it's doing whatever the hell it wanted to do. It don't care what SPY does. We like stocks like that. So that's one definitely to keep your eye on. Um, it's not gonna be a popular one that everybody's traded. It's not one that we try to promote very much in the pack. We just like to keep it where it's at. Just, you know, don't, we don't want everybody knowing what's going on with that one. So don't be going. Don't be having your friend. Don't be telling everybody on Twitter and all that. Just keep it to yourself. Um, next one here, we got Dollar General. The General. Um, I've got some bullishness here. You see, week to week, we're getting up to this quarterly broad information range. Looks like we ran into some sale orders at that price level. And we're going back to retest. Um, we had a potential to go 212 tomorrow on the four hour. Um, we'll see how much meat is on the bone, pause, but we're gonna check it out real quick. Um, and we'll see. The 212 above 222. Um, we gotta see, I mean, the quarterly broad information is like at 223.50. So I will just try, try to see. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if um, what that price point would do on the contracts. Because again, I don't like to anticipate trades breaking through broad information, even though it could, because the likelihood that it could, price is bullish. I'm going for a retest, but that's not how I like to plan my trades. So um, we got to see how it how it develops in the morning. If it does trigger, um, we've been looking at this one and Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree is the one we've been playing. Um, so yeah, similar setup. Looks like Dollar General has a little bit of a stronger setup, but um, Dollar Tree, similar deal. Um, we're looking for this one to continue up. So like it's consolidating above this broad information and we hopeful, uh, I wanna say more than hopeful. We have a uh, inclination that price is gonna continue up. Um, once it finishes doing it, what it needs to do at this broad information level. So I, I like the daily alert better than I do the four hour on Dollar Tree, but I do like the 212 on the day. 153.91 is your level for entry. Um, and I'm gonna just set this one just for documentation purposes. But we are in these long. Uh, we took the rev strat entry last week. Uh, so we are up currently. Um, All right, so let's keep it moving here. Then we're gonna get into the chat. They threw all these tickers out here, but most of them trash. Uh, Palantir, NVIDIA, let's take a look at those. Um, Palantir, looks like we could be pushing down some more, um, but I don't like to play those low, uh, Underlying stocks on zero days. Just a preference I have. I like I like major names, um, stocks with larger floats, that kind of thing. 
um, which doesn't have nothing to do with like the, the underlying per se, but a, it, a lot of times I like those larger name stocks for the zero days. So NVIDIA, we got two down hammer off the weekly broadening formation, textbook touch off the weekly, price pushing back up, um, giving us a hammer on the week. We had an outside day to day. Uh, looks like we got Chicago. We had outside four hour too, but we got Chicago um, setting up for tomorrow. That would be nice, nice little move off the weekly broadening formation on NVIDIA. I would imagine, um, you know, it is a high, more highly traded stock, so there could be people just trading it anyway. But I don't believe this one is on folks' radar for tomorrow. But um, this one, I may, I may look at. I like stuff like that. It's textbook. Um, but this will be dependent on if the market's bullish tomorrow. Uh, I think it will be though. I don't think there's a. I mean, crazy things have happened, but I think we I think we go see some bullishness tomorrow. Um, Nvidia, bless you. So we got uh, Boot Alliance, Roku, XOP, and then we're gonna get in the chat. WBA is fighting. It don't want to fall. It's fighting. Every time it drops, buyers want to buy it up. Um, that's a good sign. We are two up on the day, right to that quarterly broad information. Inside week, overall, though, the trend is down. Um, do we have enough volatility to push us to tomorrow? Um, we're under the quarterly broad information, we're under the point of control. Um, but we do have the 212 set up um, tomorrow to the upside. Looks like we did finish above the 50. Um, so there is a potential for us to continue up tomorrow. So I'll, I'll throw it on there um, and I'll evaluate the contracts to see. But uh, just caution yourself with that broad information. But uh, we, we like how Staples has been showing strength this week. We'll see if uh, WBA gets a little love from that. 35, 17. All right. Let's check the chat. Let's check the chat. What up, Dame? All right. All right, let's take a look at Verizon. Y'all know how we feel about Verizon. It's been a smacker for us this year. Been taking a couple different opportunities on it. Uh, we had a very strong day. I mean, we're looking for this one. I mean, the continuation is like what I would see likely happen tomorrow. Um, we, we may not have the same price action that we had today, but I mean, yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll have continuation tomorrow. There's potential we could go outside week. We would need to get above 39.51 for that to occur, but you know, we not we not far away from that. So I mean, we went five percent move today. Um, I mean, hell, we could do a couple percent move potentially. So we'll see. I, I like Verizon for continuation tomorrow. You do got the quarterly broad information just above 39 bucks. So that would be one level to identify. It did feel that gap to the uh, that it had to the upside. Um, the volume shelf does um, continue up till about 39 and some change. So point of control on the four hours, 39.27. Um, so potentially there you could have a point where uh, price could try to uh, wick or, or push up to from there. So Verizon looks good. We like it. We're happy that we, that it's doing what it's doing. So very, very happy with that for now. We talked about the dollar general. General is looking good. So is the tree. Um, I think, you know, tomorrow if we have continued bullish activity out of SPY, then, then we'll, we'll for sure see those, both of those move up tomorrow. What I, what I look for is the relative strength. So if SPY happens to like go sideways or trickle down or whatever in the first hour or two, whatever, I want to look for stocks that are still holding up strong that are not falling or are not pulling down with SPY. Uh, even if they're not going up, they're not falling either. They're just kind of going sideways. 
that'll help us identify the relative strength in those stocks. So that'll be one thing I'm looking for tomorrow because we can't predict what SPY is going to do. But what we can do is monitor how the stocks are reacting to SPY pulling down. So if they're not pulling in, pulling down in correlation with SPY, then we may have an opportunity to take advantage of a large trade. And so that's how we manipulate these zero days. So I actually prefer bearish zero days because those are easier to identify with strong. Um, bullish ones are good because you know you don't have to you don't have to be exact. You can just pretty much throw a lot of stuff at the wall and it works. Um, Airbnb, um, it is it did a three two um, on the day. Um, you got a couple things here. You at the bottom of a vo of a volume gap. So if you get to a continuation, you could push up price to go fill that gap to the upside to about one night. Oh, sorry, one seventeen ninety three. Um, or um, price comes back down, makes a three two two, and comes back to the point of control, which is one thirteen forty nine. Those are your two options on it. You got conflict if price goes two down tomorrow. If price goes too down tomorrow, then um, if price goes too down tomorrow, then you will essentially um, be looking for that entry three two two back to the downside, down to the uh, broad information. Uh, I'm sorry, not broad information, but to the point of control. Uh, you should probably add some broad information if you want to take a closer look at BP. Um, there might be some macros on there that we are not. Um, you know, we're not, I guess you could say, um, aware of. Um, next one here, we got BP. Uh, this thing's gapping up. Looks like price is shooting up right now. Uh, we had a two down day. Um, again, we had a rejection off the broad information um, two weeks ago. Um, now, it looks like it made a two down week. Um, but we know how we how we look at those two downs um, or those three, those bearish threes. Um, so we could very likely see a three two two back up next week, um, and then going in line, going in alignment with that thought, um, we are looking at a potential two one two to the four hour to take us back up to the upside on the four hour. Um, our entry level would be above thirty nine forty eight. And so that could be a potential move to the upside on this BP. Um, point of control is 39.60. And then you have the rev strat on the day potential above 39.48. And that right there could take you uh, back to point of control at 39.78 um, or, or a touch above that. Um, so BP is one to be looking out for, especially with XOM earnings in the morning. Um, we could see that puppy go crazy. Um, so be, keep, your, keep your eye out for that one. Um, I like that BP. That's a sneaky one right there, um, Ray. And then we've yeah, got... Yeah, I got to sit it on the weekly BF as well right now, too. So I figured, you know, BF to BF oh, without yeah. too much in the way. And then I, I analyzed the contracts and they're looking like 700 to 1,000%. So just to get it back to like 39, that level you said, about 40. And then, yeah, it's a good return right there, so... Mm, mm, mm. Sounds better than good, my brother. That sounds real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we we gonna check that out. I'll be on bright and early, um, <laughs> listening in on the XOM earnings, seeing what's going on there. Um, but yeah, BP that could be a sleeper. Um, you know, let me know what them people at the party looking like um, on the contracts. But uh, yeah, bro, this thing looking good, 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 good. Um, I'm gonna set an alert. Oh, the levels are the same. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, Clorox, Goose. The Clorox been strong, man. Um, 
We did talk about it in video already, but the Clorox, um, yeah, this one looks good. I, I really like the Clorox and how strong it's been. Um, I know my boy Paul don't like Clorox no more, but um, Clorox, <laughs> Clorox looking real strong, man. Continue up. I'm looking at um, just below that 170 where that uh, weekly BF is. Um, yeah, we had the 322 back to the upside. Um, I'm looking for a continuation tomorrow. I, I mean, this looks really freaking good. This might be about the best one I've seen yet. Full time frame continuity coming off the BF. Enforce in a, in a trend. Shh. Let me ask for much more. Well, maybe like, you know, multiple triggers on multiple time frames. If you want to, like, you want the world at your hand and it's your disposal. That right there, bro, that's about as good as it gets. Okay, that looks good, man. CLX, okay. Uh, that hey, ain't much to say. Just set the alert and wait on the trigger to happen. That looks really, really good. Oh shoot, we oh we got a brick communication sighting. Bleach it. <laughs> uh, stratosphere. If there aren't any setups, would you look at the sectors for strength? Um. I mean, that's a way to kind of filter down and see where the strength is. So yeah, you could you could pare down by sector as well. Um, but there's always setups. I'm just talking in terms of like, what I've seen in terms of the volume of stocks with these setups versus which ones in reality, I think will move. Um, and that's just based on my own like color. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So don't... Um, don't take that like it's none out there. There are some setups, as you can see, but we, uh, I'm just being choosy. But um, yeah, you can look at the sectors. That, yeah, that's what we teach. We are definitely take a look at those sectors, see what's, uh, what sectors are really uh, showing the strength, and then you can kind of pare that down. SO pumping. Oh, uh, the long position on Dollar Tree. Hold on, let me pull it up. Oh, the uh, May one fifty fives. Now, some people might might have wanted to go June. 155 or 160. But the alert, I think the alert had 160s on there too for May. And I think 155 for June. I took the closest at the money next month expiration. Oh, uh, what else? What else? Okay, so Dan, yeah, we took a look at Delta just a minute ago, but just to rehash, we were talking about, yeah, I was saying I was gonna come back to these, but yeah, we got Delta with the double, uh, well, not double, but we got the inside day on the four hour, and then we got another inside, hold on, I said that wrong. <laughs> we got an inside setup on the four hour, and then we got an inside day as well. So we've got those, we got the, both of those triggers. It looks like there's a PMG on the day as well. Just seeing over there, Dane. You know, you know, I see you with this buy low, sell high coming off the reverse. I see you, I see you, bro. Yeah, man, hey. Man, if y'all see Dane post a trade in the in the community trade ideas, man, y'all better take a look. Better pay attention. Maybe, maybe posting his receipts. Smacking them. 
30, hold on, that's not right. 33. There we go. Yeah, so Delta alerts are in. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So yeah, that bleach it looks real good. Let's take a look at Roku. I didn't even, I haven't even. Um, I think I quickly, quickly glanced at it, and then I just kind of moved on to something else. But uh, Roku, I tell you this, it ain't been show, it ain't been performing like the rest of the sector. Shit, the rest of the sector been just kind of like going crazy. Um, but they did do a good. They had a good morning. Uh, but I think it was bait. I think it's gonna probably go back two one back down to the downside tomorrow. Three one two to the downside. Uh, I would need to add some broad informations on it, but uh, hmm. I'll need to add some more BS to see on that. But yeah, Roku to me, I don't know. Um, it looked like bait. <laughs> it, like, I don't know. It just seems weaker than the rest of the sector. Like, what's going on with y'all? But I will say, you know, when it, last time it dipped to this level, it had a nice little move up. So this could be it. You know, I, I'm not going to discount it. You need to wait a little bit and let it kind of do what it needed to do, but above 51, I'm not 51, but 58, 52 will be a four hour entry, but the daily entry looks better. You got 58, 84. So you need like a dollar 80 um, move on the ticker for it to go, but that could be a potential setup for next week on a long, we got the two down on the week too. So yeah, tomorrow I'll be telling, not sure if I'm ready for a zero day. I think I'll be looking for this one. It, when, it, when is it ready to, to reverse and go back up? Um, just looking at every time it gets to these levels, it does make a move up. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a good eye right there, Dane. That's a good eye. I want to get some time on it though. That's a good find. Um, it's Apple. Apple still going. It ain't got to the broad information yet. We told y'all that thing had some room. I was like, we ain't going down till Apple turn around. And Apple ain't had no broad information to stop it since that original entry. The original entry though failed you because it went two up and then it failed and then then it went ballistic right after that. It just kept going. So they be trying. They, that's how I know the market makers done learned strat. They be trying to clap strat. Y'all ain't sleep. Just buy some time. Buy low and let it go. Um, Apple, this one right here is continuation move. Outside week, two up on the day, two up on the four. Uh, this strong, I, it, it ain't really much to, to say about it or articulate here. Um, look for continuation on the day. If you want to play it tomorrow, though, I would look for an intraday entry. So maybe go identify an entry point on a smaller time frame. This one's strong. It's bullish. Uh, you know, there ain't really much to talk about. Is 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 it's on a mission right now until it gets to that broad information. Um, and you got room, so it, it, I don't think that'd be an issue for tomorrow. Um, what we got next? Lucid, lucid, lucid. Yeah, so lucid, man. This thing. Whew. I'm going crazy. Came off a weekly broad information a couple of days ago. And looks like it's going to make its way to the quarterly BF. That's where it gets rejected. So, um, well, shit, it went there today. Um, so, I, you know, for me, I don't know if there's any more room on the bone for it. Like it's done made the move. But yeah, it, now, you know, for me to want it to break through the broad information, I need to take a longer entry with some time on it or something like that. But as far as like a, a short-term volatility move, um, I think we're too close to a broad information. But you know what? Let me zoom in a little bit. Because I mean, shit. 
What are we looking at here? What do we close the day on this thing? They close the day at 8.06. Oh, 8.10. I don't know where the hell we closed that. What's the day? Oh, 817. All right. So we closed at 817. We could get to somebody do the math on this though. If we get to this next broad information that puts us at 8, 844. So somebody do the math on that. Let me know what that what that looks like on the on the options chain. Um if it if it's if it's what I think it is, then um, actually there may be some meat on the bone. Looking at it visually, I'm like, oh, it's done. But when I look over here at the smaller time frame, I'm like, huh. They don't have to go that far. So if we were to take an entry tomorrow, entry point would be 825, no, 828, no, 825. And then eight, so from 825 to 844 or 840, something like that. It's like two, uh, what is it? Uh, three, 3%, something like that. It might do something. That might do something. Somebody let me know when y'all find it out. Um, yeah, we're talking four hour on the CLX though. Um, uh, hold on, y'all, y'all. Oh, my bad. Let me. Oh, for the eight and a half call, it's like one fifty. Hmm. For the eight call, it's ninety percent. Hmm. With increased volatility, that might kick up a notch, huh? That's intriguing. That's intriguing. I'm gonna take a look at that. Right. Um, and then just to go back to your question, Joseph, um, my BF on Apple is at, I guess if we was to look at tomorrow, 171.58, something like that. But the, the, the broad information is trending upwards. So every day that we go, it just kind of goes a tick up more and more. But yeah, 171.58. Um, I don't have anything in the way on a macro um, scale. Now, if I was to look for some dailies, we could I could quickly throw a couple on here if I see any. Um, Respect in it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ain't nothing in the way. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it hit a daily. Uh, what was that? Today? Yeah, ain't nothing but four hour and lower. Yeah, ain't nothing before our BFs and lower. Um, and so point stands. You could draw some four hours, um, but I'm not.
Okay, yeah, Joseph. Yeah, I um I have the next retracement. Like once it gets to that 170, that's kind of what I'm planning out the, um before we move to the upside. So yeah, that quarterly, that's a quarterly. So if it takes a couple of days, it might push up to like 17250. Um, but that quarterly broad information also is a fib level. So I, I'm inclined to respect it. Um the field level is 170.73. Um, I want to say that's uh, the year. I want to say that's like damn near the year. Um, so I'm inclined to respect it. Um, I think if we were to look at ES, it has a correlating broad information above it. So I think there's a potential that it could. But you got June on the contracts, but you're looking at what, two months in time. So just be mindful of that. Um, I would be looking at, you know, just be, be taking that broad information serious though for uh, your long swings. And but what else, what else? But yeah, Apple looks good, I mean. Um, and then Cat, so Cat, Caterpillar. Ooh, ooh, that thing got there and dropped. Drop, drop. Um, we had the rev strat on the four hour. Uh, we, got, we filled the gap, then cooled off. We closed above the swing low. We got the rev strat on the day. I'm gonna throw it on here. I like this, the, the, the fact that it's reversing off a couple major BFs. We're gonna see, we're gonna see what it do. We're gonna check it out. 216, all right. I'm just gonna, we're gonna throw it on there and check it out. Um, see what those contracts look like. Um, now, it sure did, right? Um, so now I'm just gonna take a quick scan. It's 7.02. So we're we making good time tonight. I uh, wanna make sure that I'm not overlooking anything. So we got four in the GPS. Um, looks like four is coming off a major BF as well, um, setting up. That looks interesting. <clears throat> What's the price? 1161. <clears throat> Ugh, buy low, sell high. Ugh. Ah, that, that looks good for a nice little buy some shares. Look at that. Every time it hits this quarterly BF, you see what it do? Bing bong, but it, you know what's happening? Every time the breakouts happen, they're getting smaller and smaller. But um, this is a significant level. Um, we got GPS. Looking to see if this one's going to push up. Went two up and came back. Um, I know. I know some folks took advantage of the the, the weekly contracts. I know Love K hit like one hundred fifty percent on these gaps on this week. Shout out! Shout out to Love to K on that. Um, let's take a look at um, Visa and then Walmart. Uh, looks like Visa is in the midst of a TTO. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Visa is at the bottom of a volume shelf with the gap back to the point of control. Before I got earnings, it was setting up perfectly. Sold that puppy off right before earnings. They like a good little buy, you know, maybe buy a couple weeks out. That looks good. Or even if you want to want to test on waters, hit them next week's. But yeah, that looks therefore it looked good at the price level it was at. Uh, that, that earnings being uh, next week is also um, interesting too. I like the way Visa moves on zero days. So I'm just gonna put it, it doesn't have the best looking setup here. Um, like again, at this stage, we're just aggregating information. 
Um, we're not take we're not making any decisions at this point. We want to aggregate the information and then go assess. Throw the broad informations on there if you don't have them. Um, go look at the uh, 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 analyze tab and evaluate what your return on investment would be. Go through those steps before you come to a final conclusion. So next one here, we're going to take a look at is Walmart. You know, we've been playing that one long for a minute now, um, over a month. And uh, yeah, the thing's been cooking. I think it's shoot, almost two months now in this Walmart. So uh, looks like it's TTOing, but at the same time, it did hit um, target at this monthly broad information. So, um, you know, the first idea was to take profits at that broad information. Um, but we do see that um, it's not ready. It's not done yet. It's saying it, it wants some more work. So it's TTON trying to accumulate a little bit of uh, orders here. And then the idea would be for it to push back up to this 153 level. I'm not a big Walmart zero day fan. So I typically would stay away from Walmart on the zero day tip. Uh, but I think it's worth taking a look at and, and seeing. Um, I want to understand what the month when the month goes back green. But um, we do have the 212 set up on the four above that 150, 154 level. Um, so that is a potential to push back up, coming out the point of control as well on the four. Um, so that one looks interesting. PFE, DVN, Uber. We're looking, at, we're looking at the jab, Pfizer, um, similar deal. We've seen enough setups. I don't know if I want to add another one that's two down on the day kind of thing, but this one sets up as well. It's like it's been beat up pretty good. So this may be good for a long entry also. Um, I don't want to take the bet that today is the day that it's going to go up. I just want to, I want to know that it's been going up for 20 days out of the last 27. And I'm taking a new entry back into continuity. That seems more logical to me than a stock that's been trending down for like 10 plus days. And then it gives you one good green candle. And then you take that reversal back up. Like, I don't want to bet that the time that I get in is going to be the entry point. So, you know, continuation on McDonald's. Yeah, I think that's likely. Um, we closed above that broad information on the weekly time frame, just under 294. I'm expecting continuation on the day, two up on the day tomorrow. That I mean, I, yeah, yep. Your answer is yes, <laughs> um, 100%. I have no doubts. Then that, that that McDonald's has been continuing to impress uh, week after week after week after week. This is this is what we talk about. You get a trade, you do your due diligence, you do your homework, and you get in the trade, you buy low and you let it go. Come back, collect your money later. Yeah, big run, man. Big run out here selling the max. So I, this Uber, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a downside alert on this Uber though. <laughs> um, gotta have something to the contrary. Yeah, we did take a look at Netflix. Um, I don't even remember what it had on the screen. Yeah, outside day, outside four hour. Um, yeah, I was I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. We write up under these broad informations. I'm just kind of like, ah. I don't like to be in between on stock, especially for zero days. And I'm definitely in between. We got conflict. Continuity would suggest we go back to the downside and then we'll be back in full time frame continuity or damn near except for the year. So continuity tells me downside. Today's action tells me upside kind of thing. So I don't like to be in between. So I'm like, yeah. When I don't know, I let it go. 
All right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? All right, y'all. Oh, hold on. Let's take a look at this John Deere and shout out that boy Rennell. Uh, he get his diamond hand badge for this for this uh, John Deere. This thing right here. Talk. This like a retest champion. This thing right here will go back and retest to the upside, quick, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, so shout out that boy Rennell for holding on to those positions because they've been trending down since January, but it's been a it's been a it's been a ride. I'd say that. Um, Right, well, we getting we getting what we expect. It's just taking its time. Uh, John Deere again. I I'll be looking for it to go back into continuity to the downside. So even if it triggers to the upside, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for that thing to die, and then as soon as that, as soon as the buying leaves, smack it because it's going back from continuity. But it just likes to retest a lot. Um, lift. I, I left Lyft alone. That's one that, you know, I had alerted for a long setup. So, you know, we, we feel bullish about it. However, um, like for tomorrow, I was, it just looks like it's consolidating. You know, like there is some range within the consolidation itself. So sure, tomorrow it could push up, um, you know, like maybe around 1040 or something like that. Um, so there is that potential. Um, but I just feel like it's ranging. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just let it be. Um, uh, cause it could go back the other way too. Um, so I'm just like, yeah, I'll, I'll let it be and kind of let it, um, continue. This needs to get out of this range. There's a lot of orders at this price level, the $10 to about 1050 price level. There's a huge amount of orders. So I'm just kind of letting it do its thing there. There's a huge gap to the upside until about, um, 15 to $16. So that's 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 the long play. You just got to get some time for it. But as far as this is still consolidating, um, and so I'm not I'm not as inclined for the zero there. Let's see, let's take a look at TLT. See what the bonds look like for tomorrow. And I think I'm gonna let y'all go. All right, TLT, we got the bonds here. Shooter on the week, that's giving us bullish vibes. Two down on the day, two on two on the four. So, okay, that gives us some bullish vibes. And then we look at the dollar bill, UUP, uh, two down on the day, I'm sorry, two down on the four hour. And then we got a two up on the day, even though it's red. So we're setting up for a rev strap back to the downside on UUP, the dollar bill. So if we get bearish on the bonds and um, the dollar, then that means uh, we should be pretty doggone bullish on, um, on the commodities in the market. So um, those, that's just kind of counter inverses I'll be looking at as far as the trifecta goes. So with that, I think we are good to go. Um, and I will let y'all have it. Um, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all night. And if y'all got any questions, follow us, just hit me up. Let me get this watch list and recording up on the YouTube channel pretty quick here. Um, and y'all have a great rest of y'all night. Take it easy. Peace.